Good morning, dear students. A very warm welcome to the English literature class. Today we are going to continue with the same unit, unit number four, Hearts and Hands, written by O. Henry, Part One. Do you remember what we were discussing in the previous classes? In one of the classes, we were discussing about the introductory parts of the chapter, like some information regarding the author, the specialities of this particular work, and so on. And the next class, we were discussing about the different literary devices used in the chapter. And I hope you have gone through it and learned it very well. Now, let's waste without wasting time. Let's move to the class. You may use your textbook while I'll explain the chapter. At Denver, there was an influx of passengers into the coaches on the eastbound B and M Express. In one coach, there was sat a very pretty young woman, dressed in elegant taste and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts of an experienced traveler. Before we move to the explanation, let's learn a few unfamiliar words. First one, influx, which means the arrival of a large number of people. Suppose just imagine, if you have gone through railway station, you might have seen, when a train arrives at the station, there will be a huge rush of people. A huge number of people will be trying to get into the railway compartments. At the same time, a number of people will be trying to get down from the train. So this particular movement is being known as influx. It's not only in railway station, wherever there is a huge rush of people, it will be known as influx, which means a huge rush of people. Next word is elegant. Elegant means graceful, a very active, very pleasant appearance. And third one, luxurious, very comfortable and expensive. In our home, we are using different luxurious items. We ourselves will be using different luxurious items like ornaments, then perfumes, different cosmetics items. All those are luxurious items. So now let's move to the paragraph. At Denver, there was an influx of passengers into the coaches on the eastbound B and M Express. So the particular name or the name of the particular train is B and M Express. So when B and M Express reached at the railway station, there was a huge rush of the people. When it reached at Denver railway station, number of people rushed towards the train. In one coach, there sat a very pretty young woman dressed in elegant taste and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts of an experienced traveler. So in one of the coaches of the train, there sat a very beautiful young lady dressed in elegant taste. Elegant means graceful, very attractive. So her dress, dressing sense was so attractive and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts. Luxurious comforts may be like, like uh, ornaments and very costly dress and the different things like bag and all used by the lady. So she was using all these kinds of luxurious comforts and looked like an experienced traveler. So she was very calm and sat like a very much experienced traveler. So this is the first character of this story, the young pretty woman. And she dressed in elegant taste and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts of an experienced traveler. So this is what is the first explanation about the appearance of the lady who is one of the main characters of our story. Now let's see who are the, who are the next characters of the story. Among the newcomers were two young men, one of handsome presence with a bold, frank countenance and manner, the other a ruffled, gum-faced person, heavily built and roughly dressed. The two were handcuffed together. Now, almost 
three different characters will be familiar to you before we move to the paragraph let's learn few unfamiliar words first word is countenance which means the appearance of a person's face and the second word is ruffled which means upset looking uh, like upset when we get tension we will be upset third one glum faced which means gloomy faced not interested to speak much very gloomy and fourth one handcuffed which means chained i have already introduced this word to you in the first part of the chapter uh, this particular instrument will be used by a police to arrest a person hands will be handcuffed together because that person should not run away so these are the new words you have to learn it now let's go to the paragraph among the newcomers were two young men one of handsome presence with a bold frank countenance and manner so here we are going to see about the next character the second character of the story so two people entered into the compartment number of people were there among the newcomers so when the train stopped at the denver railway station number of people boarded the train and among the newcomers among the people who boarded the train from denver railway station there were two young men one of handsome presence with a bold frank countenance and manner so number of people boarded the train but we are going to focus or the writer is focusing on two people and there are some specialities with those two people and the first one who was very handsome with a bold frank countenance and manner so his face was looking like very bold and frank and was expressing all the good manners which means the appearance of the first person was so impressive he was looking so different from others like a very noble person a very sincere person and a very wealthy person so the first person's appearance was so impressive and the second one the other a ruffled glum faced person heavily built and roughly dressed so what are the qualities of the other person what is the appearance of the other person ruffled ruffled means upset the second person was looking so upset glum faced means gloomy faced he was not interested to speak so first of all he was looking like upset and from his facial expression it was very clear that he is not interested to talk with anybody and heavily built and roughly dressed when we were discussing about the appearance of the lady you might be remembering the word used dressed in elegant taste but here the second person his appearance is something different he was roughly dressed so there are some you might have got a clear idea about the appearance of the three different characters of this story now the last part of this chapter or the last sentence of this paragraph says the two were handcuffed together now that atmosphere is entirely or the atmosphere is getting changed as we know handcuff is used to by the police to fasten two hands together especially it is using to fasten criminals so these two people one were looking very bold and handsome and the other one who were looking ruffled glum faced heavily built and roughly dressed these two people were handcuffed together as they passed down the soil of the coach the only vacant seat offered was a reserve so he reversed the one facing the attractive young woman here the linked couple seated themselves the young woman's glance fell upon them with a distant swift disinterest then with a lovely smile brightening her countenance and a tender pink 
pinging her rounded cheeks, she held out a little grey gloved hand. When she spoke, her voice, full, sweet and deliberate, proclaimed that its owner was accustomed to speak and be heard. Before we move to the paragraph, there are a few new words for us. First of all, sail, which means a passage between sections of seats. If you have traveled by flight or train, you, you can see there is this, a, a very narrow passage between seats. So that's the meaning of the word sail. Second word is tinging, which means give a small amount of color to something. So here the meaning of tinging means something like a blush on the face, uh, something like a very uh, mild red color on the face. Give a small amount of color to something. So according to our context, it is something like a blush on the face. And the next word is gray glove, which means a, a hand covered with a gray colored glove. I think it's very clear to you. And the fourth word is proclaimed. Proclaimed means declare, declared. Now let's see what is being expressed from this particular paragraph. As they passed down the sail of the coach, the only vacant seat offered was a reversed face, one facing the attractive young woman. So there's two people. The two young men were passing through the compartments and once when they are passing through the compartment they have seen a vacant seat and it is clearly mentioned only vacant seat offered was a reversed one facing the attractive young woman. So there were only one seat laying vacant and it was just opposite to the lady who was sitting with elegant dress. Here the linked couple seated themselves. So they have occupied the seat. The young woman's glance fell upon them with a distant, swift disinterest. So once when they sat opposite to the lady, she looked at both of them with a disinterest. She was not at all interested because their appearance were something entirely different. One fellow was looking so attractive, handsome and the other fellow was looking so tensed and gloomy. So that's why she was not at all interested in both the young woman. Then with a lovely smile brightening her countenance and a tender pink tinging her rounded cheeks. She held out a little grey gloved hand. So first of all, or for the first instant, she was looking at them with disinterest. Then after she realized something, that's what changed her facial expression. So first she looked at with disinterest, but later it changed. Then with a lovely smile brightening her countenance. So what happened? On her face, it made a, a very lovely smile, which brightened her facial appearance and a tender pink tinging her rounded cheeks. A very light pink color started to appear on her rounded cheeks. She held out a little gray gloved hand. So she took out her one of her hands and something like for shaking the hand she had taken it out when she spoke her voice full sweet and deliberate proclaimed so she started to speak something the next we are going to see the f her first conversation with the two strange people so she spoke something what was the speciality of that her voice was full sweet and deliberate proclaimed that its owner was accustomed to speak and be heard. Her voice was so sweet and it was very clear from the voice that she is trained. 
she is an experienced person to speak and be heard well mr rayston if you will make me speak first i suppose i must don't you ever recognize old friends when you meet them in the west so this was the first conversation of the story so the first dialogue was told by the good looking lady what was her conversation well miss rayston if you will make me speak first i suppose i must don't you ever recognize old friends when you meet them in the west so the good looking man his name is miss rayston it's very clear from the conversation well miss rayston if you will make me speak first i suppose i must so he was sitting just opposite to the lady but he was not noticing who was sitting next to him or opposite to him that's why she told if you will make me speak first i suppose i must and again she continued don't you ever recognize old friends when you meet them in the west so have you ever noticed that i am your friend i am an old friend of yours and have you noticed me yet is it because you have met me from here from the western part of the country the younger man roused himself sh sharply at the sound of her voice seemed to struggle with a silent sorry slight embarrassment which he threw off instantly and then clasped her fingers with his left hand without going to paragraph a few new words are there for you first one roused which means got excited a kind of thrill next word is embarrassment feeling of awkwardness something like a kind of shame next word is clasped which means held tightly or hold tightly something since it is in the second form of the word clasped ed form it is that's why it is given here like held tightly if it is clasped which means hold tightly okay the younger man roused himself sharply at the sound of her voice seemed to struggle with a slight embarrassment so when she spoke or when she told his name mr aston mr aston roused himself sharply at the sound of her voice so he became very much excited or he got excited seemed to struggle with a slight embarrassment at the same time he felt some shame because if you want to know the reason behind his shame you might be remembering in the previous part we have seen both of them were handcuffed so that was the matter made him embarrassment which made him a little shy which he threw off instantly so immediately he overcame the shyness and then clasped her fingers with his left hand he grabbed or he hold her fingers with his left hand so something had happened after this the students we are winding up today's class here and in the next class we will see what had happened once when he grabbed her ha fingers so with this we are winding up today's class we will meet again in the next class with the remaining incident still then i would like to sign off Thank you.